Hi there, and welcome to this webinar, Journey to a Stress-Free Release. My name is Jason Wong. I'm a product manager for Jira. And I'm Megan Cook. I'm a product manager for Developer Tools. And that includes products such as Stash, Bitbucket, and Bamboo. And uh, you know, I love this photo, Jason. That was such a good day, wasn't it? Um, we'd just been celebrating, and not just because we'd finally made it, because we're on a boat, but actually we are on the boat because we just pushed out that huge release. Yeah, it was a massive release. A lot of effort went into getting things right, and you know, it went right down to the wire. But I'm glad we made it. We got a lot of uh, good stuff into that release. Um, you should have seen how stressed we were the day before. We were all, everyone was running around frantically trying to make sure um, all the things were in. Um, but it, it, was, it was great to finally celebrate our wins out there on that day. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, you know, it's, it, it's, it was great to, to be out there. You know, it's um, not just because it was on a boat, but you know, it's the best part of the software development cycle for many teams, right? We can get uh, 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 the stuff we've been working really hard on out into our customers' hands. Um, and, you know, it's, it's um, no secret that the best software teams out, uh, out there are the ones who uh, ship often quickly to customers, get their feedback. Um, and uh, and work on continuously improving the experience. So is is that how all of your releases go for your teams? Because I can tell you right now that that is not at all how it happens for my team. <laughs> well, you know that's that's how it looks um, in theory, right? You know, from the outside, I think to most people, this is what we sort of show people when when um uh, when we're talking about how we do the release. But um, there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that go on that. Uh, that you don't see in there. It's, um, it's a pretty stressful time um, and uh, uh, particularly with this release there are quite a few things that we did uh, you know, after we hit that release button that surprised us. Oh wow, yeah I, I certainly understand when releases go wrong. Um, but tell me about some of the worst surprises that you've had to deal with. Yeah, so um, with this particular release here we, you know, we, we got our issues um, you know, all our done issues targeting this, uh, this that particular version 1.1 1 .1, um, in line and uh, you know, it pushed it out um, and uh, a few things came up. You know, it turns out that one of the things that happened was we accidentally pushed some pricing changes that were supposed to have happened the week after. Um, they just got merged in from the billing project somehow. Oh, ouch. So everyone saw the pricing changes early because you hadn't realized they'd been merged in. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, a few other things also came up. Uh, we we are also aiming to get a new search service um, out, um, but it turned out that the the coding actually hadn't finished. And we pushed the version out there, we couldn't find it. So um, uh, when we when we looked into it, um, turns out that it was actually still in progress. It hadn't been done. Uh, so let me guess. Um, all of those issues were marked as done in Jira, right? So you thought you were fine. Yeah, um, and but. That's not all. It got worse. Um, <laughs> well, I got a call from support after we pushed it out, and it turns out there was a bug. Um, and in this particular situation, the login page was no longer working on a particular browser, which is which is really bad, right? Because thirty percent of our customers still use that browser, and they couldn't log in. Um, a specific case when they're working remotely via VPN. Um, but uh, I, when we looked into it, it, it turns out that um, it had not been reviewed by um, another one member in the team. That might have probably caught the. Um, that, that particular problem. Oh, wow. I mean, you know, I don't think you should feel so bad because when I was researching development process with our customers, I, I really found that a majority of them cited releasing as one of their main problem areas. So you're certainly not alone. And uh, e even our customers who release several times a day or, or even several times a week uh, can have trouble keeping track of what's going on and keeping quality high. So, so before we even talk about tooling talk or about anything like that, there are a few really development practices that you can implement to, to help ensure your releases you are stable as as and ready to be shipped. In state I mean, ideally you want to be as close as possible to being in a shippable state uh, at any time. First off, there is feature branching. And actually at Alassian, we're so in love with feature branching that we create a branch for every issue, no matter whether it's a bug, a task, or a story, if it has code, we create a branch for it. Right, it's even built into Jira if you're using it with Bitbucket or Stash. In Jira, there's a create branch link on the issue that will automatically default a lot of information for you, such as the branch name and repo. Yeah, I, it sounds like a lot of overhead, uh, but let's see how this helps keep quality high. 
So typically in any software project, you have a set of issues that represent business problems, features, or bug fixes that need to be implemented in your software. And then there's the code that actually implements those changes. If you use a traditional linear workflow for your repository, like committing directly to trunk if you're using SVN or master if you're using Git, it can be hard to tell what state your issues are in. You might be able to tell that a developer has started work on a particular issue, but it's difficult to tell whether it is feature complete or if they have more changes to commit. And it also makes it difficult to back out of changes. So Git feature branches take care of this problem nicely. Instead of committing straight to master, all development work is done on an independent branch. Once code is finished, reviewed, and all the tests are passing, it gets merged into master. This keeps unstable changes isolated from the master branch and has the nice side effect that master only contains code that is ready to ship, so it is always releasable. The trick is to keep branches as green as possible because it makes life much easier when it comes time to merge. There's also continuous integration. Continuous integration is the practice of the entire team integrating their code frequently, as in several times a day. Each check-in then gets verified by an automated build that runs tests. All right, so that would allow developers to detect problems as early as possible. So it, it doesn't get rid of bugs, but it makes it easy to find them while the context of what the developer was working on is, is still really fresh. Right. It's important to run C on every branch, um, otherwise you could find yourself working away on a new feature and everything might look great, but when you merge to master, you could end up with a broken build, which means that master is no longer in that nice releasable state. In this case, nobody can create new branches off master, which slows down development for the entire team. Right, so don't just run your test when you merge, make sure you know your code will, be, will pass beforehand. Yep. You can claim the CI config that exists on master on any new branches created off master. That can be a real pain to do manually, but fortunately tools like Bamboo can automatically detect new branches and claim this config for you. This allows you to be notified of any problems as early as possible and keep them off master. While continuous integration is fantastic for early notification of problems, it won't catch everything. Problems like technical debt or inefficient code still need human judgment, and that's where pull requests come in. A pull request is a request to your team to pull your changes into the master branch. Here's how it works. Before approving and merging those changes, your team should review your code, and this has three great benefits. You get feedback from the rest of the team in that early detection of, of any problems or inconsistencies. You get to grow the knowledge of the team on the wider code base, and everybody gets informed of upcoming changes. It also encourages shared ownership of the code because everybody's working together and they're responsible for reviewing and finding those problems rather than just pushing changes in silos. So here's what a pull request looks like in Atlassian's server git hosting solution, Stash. Your team will review the diffs on your branch and can comment, comment in line with the related code to give you that important feedback as early as possible. It's also a record of all the discussion that's happened. Yeah, these reviews are great. We find that it helps catch bugs, better validates work against requirements or acceptance criteria, and gets team members writing code in a maintainable way. So when they or someone else comes back to this code, it's better to work with. So just to recap. Feature branching keeps master in a stable, releasable state and gives the team a quick way to see what's ready to be shipped and what is still on a separate branch being worked on. Continuous integration gives developers the earliest warning that, that they've introduced a build breaking change. And pull requests allow the team to review any code ready to be merged for any other problems while sharing best practices. Um, and this ensures that the team delivers high quality, maintainable code. So we've run through that pretty quickly. Uh, but if you'd like some more detailed information, you can jump onto our Git site for tutorials for your developers, a more in-depth exploration of the different kinds of workflows for different projects, and lots of other great Git resources. 
So Jason, I think those development practices would have really helped you deliver a quality release. You would have had partially done features on a different branch from the one that you were cutting your release from, early warnings of failing builds, and your team would have been reviewing each other's code for any other bugs. Absolutely. My team is even using Stash and Bamboo, which help with each practice. However, during an extremely busy project, how do I ensure these practices are being followed? Releasing is still hard and subject to human error. Do I make sure there's a release engineer manually reconciling the code, builds and review? It's such a long, tedious process that is prone to error. Yeah, that's, that's very true. I mean, you can still end up with outstanding branches containing features that you wanted to ship as part of the release, or failing builds on your release candidate, or, uh, <laughs> or my favorite, uh, ninja commits that haven't been part of any code review process but have still snuck in there. Absolutely, because manual processes and developers don't mix, we decided that what we really wanted was an automated system that could check all these problems for us. So to help with all of that pain, we've created the Release Hub. It combines the strengths of Jira, Stash, and Bitbucket and Bamboo to automatically assess the release for any potential problems. By providing an accurate picture of the release at any point in time, it allows teams to stay as close as they can to keeping their software in a releasable state and cut down on all the stress. Let's take a closer look. So as you zero in on cutting your release, scope and risk become top of mind. The scope is about what we are targeting to release. Which stories have yet to be picked up? Are they in progress? Which are already done? You also want to assess the risk of being able to meet that commitment. Are done tasks really done when looking at the status of pull requests? Are we seeing a lot of builds that are failing? Have we deployed the work to dev so that we can start dog fooding? Right at the top here, we've built a high level overview that shows you how your release is tracking. As always, you can specify the start and release date for the version. This is used to calculate the number of days left. The bar shows how many issues are done, currently in progress, and how many are still left to go. So the whole team is aware of how close or how far you are away from getting uh, your software out the door. In this case, the team only has 33 issues to go. Four of those are in progress, and 29 haven't been started. With 28 days left, I'm feeling pretty comfortable. These sections are grouped by status category. By hovering over any section of the bar, you can see how the issues break down by status in each category. You can click on any of the categories to drill down into the issues themselves. This gives a really nice overview of all the issues that the category in that category and can be particularly useful for understanding the development status of all issues that are currently in progress. On the right hand side of the issues list is an aggregation of any development that has taken place in Stash, Bitbucket, Bamboo, Fisheye or Crucible. Hover over each one for more information or click to drill into the details. It's the same information that can be accessed from the development panel on an issue. You can see the details of branches, commits, pull requests or reviews, builds and deployments right from the overview of your version. Jira knows what is relevant to an issue when you include the issue key in your commit message, so don't forget. This is great because you no longer have to click into every issue to understand where development is up to for your in-progress issues. You can just scan the list of issues for anything that looks like a problem and dive right in, all without leaving the context of Jira. So we've built this feature here um, called warnings. And what they do is ultimately give you a really nice automated check on the release readiness of your version. The warnings are built to look for any differences between your code and your Jira issues and alert you to the problem automatically so you don't have to spend all that time doing a manual reconciliation. Currently there are three different problems that warnings look for and they take advantage of the information that Jira pulls from DevTools and this really enables you to understand whether those issues are really done. If you have an issue that is part of the version and is marked as done but has a failing build, Jira will alert you that this may be a problem for the release. As we said earlier, all issues that are part of the release should have their builds fixed. The second type of warning is for issues that have been marked done that have an open pull request or review. Jira will warn you that this could be a problem. Having an open pull request or review will usually mean that the code hasn't been merged to master and hasn't passed a peer review, leaving it open for poor quality. 
And finally, if you have some code associated with an issue marked for the release, and it isn't part of a pull request or Crucible review, then Jira will recognize that it hasn't gone through that crucial step and create a warning letting you know that this could jeopardize the release. So these warnings are displayed in three categories along with the issues development information. So you can investigate the problem and take action straight away. In this screen, we can see that the team has five issues that have been marked as done and have code but do not have a pull request or review associated with them. This could put the release at risk. Now just below them are 47 issues that have been marked as done but still have failing builds. Hmm, feeling confident about hitting that release date still? Uh, yeah, but you know, this time around we're not letting these problems continue to go on and surprise us at the 11th hour. By using warnings, Jira now lets you know these problems as soon as they arise. So you don't need to wait until a release date, but you can really um, you know, take action and proactively take care of these problems. Uh, you can visit this page at any time to make sure that there aren't any additional problems lurking around in your release. Okay, so now that we have some warnings, it's time to spring into action and take care of them. Yeah. That must be the happiest sheep in the world. He must be super confident that we're going to get this release out. <laughs> uh, each warning category allows you to view those warnings in the issue navigator. This is incredibly powerful because you can now add different columns to get more information about these problem issues. What I like to do is add assignee equals current user uh, to the JQL search. And then what I can do is actually share that search with my team uh, and when they go to the link in their email, all they'll see are the issues assigned to them, so they can jump right into fixing the problem without getting any distractions. So we recognize that teams like to work differently, depending on their context. So if some of these warnings aren't help helpful to you right now, you can hide them. For example, you might be a very small team who are using over-the-shoulder peer reviews instead of pull requests. Now to hide all warnings in a category, just click on the Manage Warnings button and uncheck any warnings that you don't want to see. If you uncheck all of the warnings, the tab will go away entirely. But we recommend you leave them on. Release Hub really gives us a clear picture on release readiness and confidence that everything is done and ready to go. So all your issues are done, all your warnings have been taken care of, so let's go ahead and hit that release button. You can actually release straight from Jira using Bamboo by clicking on the button in the top right-hand corner. You can select a Bamboo build to release your version. Uh, you can also set up a build to run through some final checks and make the deployment stage manual, and then kick it off here by selecting the existing build. And that's how the new release hub helps you ship confidently with fewer defects so that you have more time to relax. So if you're using Jira Cloud, you can access the release hub right now. And if you're hosting your own Jira instance, it's available with Jira 6.4 and above. You can already use this with Bitbucket and Bamboo Cloud. And if you're using our server products, you'll need Stash 2.10, Bamboo 5.4, or Fisheye and Crucible 3.3 and above. So to access it, log into Jira and get to the release hub from your plan board by opening a version and clicking on the details link. Or you can use the new sidebar and click on the ship. If you aren't using any of our tools and would like an evaluation, you can go to atlassian.com slash software slash dev tools and start a free evaluation. Bitbucket and Stash for code hosting, Bamboo for continuous integration, and Sourcetree is our free Git and Mercurial client. Check out the Agile Coach, our no-nonsense guide to making software better. You'll find more detailed articles on best practices such as building backlogs, good estimation practices, running Scrum, running Kanban, managing Agile at scale to add to your tool bag. Finally, at the bottom, we have a link to the Release Hub blog. Here you'll find all the information contained in this webinar, along with how you can get started using Release Hub with your team, including setting up Jira with DevTools. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, we've left plenty of time to take some questions, so stick around and let us know what you want to know more about.